Greetings, friends, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 31 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle. But what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment basis. And while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health and nutrition or prescription drugs, we are here for you. We welcome your phone calls on the bright side at 844-236-6010. That's 844-236-6010. If you have questions about the longevity products, longevity business, something you may have heard about, read about, about prescription drugs or health challenges you want clarification on, if you have formulation questions, skin health questions, we are here for you at 844-236-6010. 844-236-6010. Of course, if you have a success story you'd like to share, we love hearing those. Or if you just want to contribute to the conversation, 844-236-6010 is our number. Try to call in early so we can get to as many calls as possible. I'm always leaving folks on hold, and I hate doing that. So if you call in early, we'll get to, uh, we'll be able to get to as many calls. Uh, well, hopefully we'll get to all your calls at 844-236-6010. If you want to purchase any of the Longevity products you hear advertised or recommended on the Bright Side, please head to my websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. You can purchase all the Longevity products off the website, or you can sign up to join the Bright Side Ben team for a one-time $25 fee. You can start a Longevity business. If health and nutrition and supplementation has helped you or your loved ones and you want to start a business where you can help spread the word about the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement program, you really want to check out the Longevity products and the longevity business, the longevity business opportunity, all for one time $25 fee. You can be an entrepreneur, start your own business, enjoy all the tax benefits associated with having your own business, make your own hours, or if you just want to get your products at the wholesale price for a one time $25 fee, check out the longevity business opportunity at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. You can also call the Brightside Ben phone team at 866-735-2470. That's 866-735-2470. All right. Welcome back to the Brightside, friends. We have been talking about the statin drug scam. I call it a scam, this idea that we can statinize ourselves back to health. We said there's no real hard proof that lowering cholesterol pharmacologically, or for that matter, any, in any way, in and of itself is a health strategy. And certainly not by poisoning the cells that make cholesterol, which is how statin drugs. Certainly that's not a way to get healthy. There's no drug that can get us healthy, period. I'm saying this as a registered pharmacist. Do you need drugs sometimes? Okay. You need drugs sometimes. Pain pills, if you're in pain. Of course, we know the problems associated with pain pills, antibiotics, if you have an infection. And, of course, we know the problems associated with antibiotics. Nonetheless, a case could be made that, you know, antibiotics and, and pain pills have, have a place. And I don't disagree with that. I've, I've experienced the benefits of pain pills myself. I've experienced the benefits of antibiotics myself. I've seen them. So, okay, antibiotics and opioids and pain pills, I can see a place for those. However, for chronic long-term health challenges, you cannot get better, period. You cannot get healthier, period, by being on a drug, period, period, period. I don't know how much firmer I can be. And even though statin drugs are the most commonly prescribed class of drugs in the, on the planet, 40 million Americans are taking them. That's one out of eight Americans are on a statin drug. One out of every three or four adults are on a statin drug. 
The same is true. You can't get better by being on a statin drug. And if anyone's on a statin drug, it's a safe bet that they haven't examined the logic. Behind, uh, beyond this, the, the simplistic drug company promoted meme that says cholesterol is bad for my heart and I need to lower it or I'll get a heart attack. It's a meme. It's, a, it's a, 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 an idea that has been injected into the zeitgeist, into the culture that somehow we all believe. Most of us believe. Probably people listening to this radio program are a little bit skeptical, but most Americans believe cholesterol is bad for my heart and I need to lower it or I'll get a heart attack. And no one is asking important questions like, why is cholesterol bad? Why are the statin poisons that I'm putting in my body better than the cholesterol that my body makes? How exactly do statin drugs accomplish their health-promoting magic, their heart health-promoting magic? What exactly are statin drugs doing to my body? These are the questions we need to be asking. The cholesterol-lowering strategy, the idea that you can get better, your heart can get better by lowering cholesterol, is now being co-opted for, uh, for more than protection against heart disease. Now doctors want to use it for Alzheimer's disease. A lot of doctors believe that Alzheimer's disease is a cholesterol issue and that statin drugs can improve the symptoms of of dementia, of cognitive impairment that's associated with Alzheimer's. By the way, Alzheimer's is, is, uh, is now referred to as a synonym for dementia, but it's not. Alzheimer's disease is technically early onset dementia. Dementia that occurs uh, with aging, cognitive decline that occurs with aging is not Alzheimer's disease, even if it's full-blown dementia. And doctors want to use statin drugs for dementia issues, Alzheimer's or otherwise. Some, uh, some uh, so-called alternative doctors, functional medicine doctors, they're still doctors, alternative doctors. They, uh, uh, some of these guys who've, who have drank the cholesterol causes heart disease Kool-Aid will tell you you can lower your cholesterol without statins. Oh, we can lower, you don't need, you don't want those statin drugs. We can lower your cholesterol without statins, as if cholesterol is some kind of bad guy. And this just perpetuates the idea of lowering cholesterol to get healthy. Dr. David Crandall is a cardiologist. He writes a, a newsletter called the Heart Health Report Newsletter, to which I subscribe. Always want to know what these MDs are thinking. He recommends lowering, he's a good guy, he recommends lowering cholesterol by using a, quote, plant-based diet. He says, quote, taking two grams of plant steroids daily and walking an hour a day, and uh, in addition, uh, adding certain foods to the diet, including oats, Soy. This is a uh, this is a, uh, an alternative doctor, including oats, soy, and nuts, along with plant sterol, uh, lower cholesterol by 14%. He recommends eating lots of soy and eating lots of oats to lower your cholesterol. Bonehead, 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 bonehead. I'm going to tell you why your cholesterol is up and you'll goes up and you'll understand why eating soy and oats is not a good idea to lower your cholesterol. We'll talk about that here in a second. Perhaps the most egregious application of statin drug nonsense is when people in their 80s are put on them. Elderly folks on cholesterol, uh, statin drugs, cholesterol-lowering medication. If this is you, please understand that the odds of you having to deal with toxicity and nutritional deficiency from your statin drug way supersedes any benefits you're going to get from that drug. If you are in your 70s or 80s, your body is fragile and frail, at least more fragile and frail than it is when you're younger, and you are even more subject to toxicity associated from drugs, especially if you're living the standard American lifestyle, and especially if your heart is in a position where you, the doctor thinks you need a statin drug. Elderly folks on statin drugs, it, it's the nastiest thing you could do. Now you put an extra burden on, this, uh, on, your, uh, on an elderly liver. Now you put an extra a burden of nutritional deficiency on an elderly body. Even the American Medical Directors Association, the AMDA, recently recommended against the pr routine prescription of statins in people older than 70 or who have a, quote, limited life expectancy. There is no evidence, this is from a quote from the American Medical Directors Association, there is no evidence showing that lowering cholesterol in people over 70 translates to lower death rates from heart attacks, cardiovascular disease, or any other cause, unquote. In addition, they also report that side effects like mental confusion, muscle problems could lead to more serious consequences in elderly people. And this is just common sense, guys. You cannot get better by being on a drug. You cannot get healthier by being on a drug. You cannot help your heart by being on a statin drug. It's not possible because statin drugs, like all drugs, put a burden on the body and a burden on the heart. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back right after this. Okay, 
and we are back on the bright side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Thanks for joining in, friends. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific and 10 to 11 Central Time, 24-7 on our archive pages at brightsideben.com and benfuchsarchives.com. We have search engines up at both websites. If you miss a program or want to review a program or direct a client or a patient or a friend or family member to a specific topic, Go to brightsideben.com and also benfuchsarchives.com and check out our search engine, as well as all the longevity products at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. We've got blog posts and news stories and videos, all kinds of good health information, as well as the longevity products. And you can also sign up to join the Brightside Ben team right off the website's criticalhealthnews.com, pharmacistben.com and brightsideben.com for a one-time $25 fee. You can be a longevity distributor, get your products at the wholesale price. Be an entrepreneur, make your own hours, work out of your home, enjoy all the tax benefits associated with having your own business, and at the same time, helping spread the word about the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement program. Isn't that a bonus? You get on your longevity products, you change your life, you lose weight, you get off your prescription drugs, and you can start a business making money, helping spread the word about how important and powerful a nutritional supplement program can be. You really should discover for yourself that the longevity products, the longevity business can change lives, can change your lives, and can change the lives of others. Please check out the longevity business opportunity and the longevity products at brightsideben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, and pharmacistben.com, or call the Brightside Ben phone team at 866 735 2470. That's 866 735 2470. Okay, so the AMDA, that is the American Medical Directors Association, recommends against the Routine prescription of statin drugs in, older, in people older than 70, even though lots of folks in nursing homes, lots of folks over the age of 70, lots of folks who, uh, who are frail and fragile at the level of, uh, of clearing out prescription drugs, that is the level of the liver, are put on these statin drugs. The AMDA warns that side effects like mental confusion and muscle problems in elderly folks can compound. Uh, can compound problems, can compound health issues. And this is just common sense. Now there's pushback uh, on the anti-statin, uh, the, the idea that you should not use statins or you should m- reduce your intake of statin drugs. Now there's pushback from the medical community, from the website medicine.net. A wave of, quote, a wave of anti-science skepticism may put people with high cholesterol at risk if they're convinced to quit life-saving statin medications. Health uh, heart experts warn, unquote. Quote, an Internet-driven cult, that's us. I'm an Internet-driven cult, I suppose, the bright side. An Internet-driven cult is attacking the safety and effectiveness of cholesterol-lowering statins, despite mounds of clinical trial data showing the drugs work and produce minimal side effects, says Dr. Stephen Nissen, chairman of the cardiovascular, chairman of cardiovascular medicine at the Cleveland Clinic. Listen, it is not anti-science. It is scientific logic. And this, by the way, underscores the difference between clinical medicine or clinical chemistry and biochemistry. Clinical chemistry is the, is the chemistry of statistics. It's the chemistry of, uh, of symptoms. It's the chemistry of, uh, of, of the clinic, of clinical measurements, of the kind of test you get when you go to a functional medicine specialist. Biochemistry is the chemistry of your body, how your body actually works. Now, if you look at statistics, you'll say, well, you get a 1% less risk of heart attacks. One out of 100 people have uh, prevent a heart attack, and we know this by measuring uh, how many people are on statin drugs and how many heart attacks they have, blah, 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 blah. And that's how they come up with their conclusions. I'm talking biochemistry. I'm talking how the body works. I'm not talking statistics. You take a statin drug, your cells say, what the heck are you and why are you here? Your body has to mobilize all of its nutrition, all of its, uh, its detoxification chemistry to dump that statin drug out as quick as possible. And you, uh, for somehow, we think we're going to get better by taking this kind of substance, a poison substance. Not to mention the fact that statin drugs will lower the production, reduce the production of coenzyme Q10, which is a very important heart health nutrient. It'll reduce the production of cholesterol, which is important for building, which is an anabolic substance, that is a building substance. It just flies in the face of logic. From uh, 
This is from, where is this? Where am I reading this from? More Dr. Stephen Nissen of the Cleveland Clinic. Fake news about statins is discouraging the use of these life-saving experts. Apparently this guy, Stephen Nissen, is a big-time spokesman for statin drugs. I've got to do my research on who Stephen Nissen is. But it's, it's other doctors, too, because they look at the statistics. They don't understand or, or they don't care necessarily about the biochem- biochemistry impact of statin drugs. Now, I could sit here and I could tell you all the logic about statin drugs and all the statistics about statin drugs and why you don't want to take them. Yesterday we read an article from the Daily Telegraph, quote, high cholesterol does not cause heart disease. New research finds from the journal Prescriber, quote, industry sponsored studies which found that only 0.5% of healthy people avoided a heart attack or stroke by taking statins for five years, unquote. I could read these things. It doesn't matter, though. It's the question of biochemistry common sense. Statin drugs are toxins. They're poisons the the body has to detoxify and eliminate. And only a biochemical ignoramus can possibly think that putting a poison in your body is a health strategy. If you want to lower your cholesterol without drugs, here's how you do it. First of all, you've got to ask, why is all my cholesterol elevated? It's not because you're eating cholesterol. So why is the body making cholesterol? The body makes cholesterol as a building substance. What we have done over the last... 200 years, but really over the last 10,000 years, but at, at an accelerated pace over the last 200 years, over the last 100 years, over the last 50 years, we have zapped the body, we have flooded the body, we have saturated the body with signals that tell it it's supposed to be growing. We put high energy compounds into the body. This is the reason why our cholesterol goes up. When the body gets high energy compounds, i.e. food, i.e. high calorie foods, i.e. energy dense foods, i.e. sugar rich foods, processed foods, when the body gets these kinds of foods, it thinks it's supposed to be building. So the cholesterol levels go up because cholesterol is a building substance. We have sent the body signals over the last couple of hundred years. We have sent the body signals at an increasing rate that it is supposed to be building. It's the high energy foods uh, without being used. It's the input of high energy foods without having that energy used that drives up cholesterol levels. You want to lower your cholesterol, drop your blood sugar. This is the main problem. It's elevated blood sugar and elevated insulin. This is why Dr. Stephen Crandall is wrong when he says that you'll lower your cholesterol by eating more oats and soy and nuts. Anything that raises your cholesterol or raises your insulin levels and your blood sugar levels is going to tend to raise your cholesterol levels. And this is the real problem. It's called hyperinsulinemia. That means too much insulin in the blood. Hyper, too much, insulin, insulin, emia in the blood. Hyperinsulinemia and dysglycemia. Don't be put off by these multisyllabic, long scientific biochemical words. They're important to understand. Hyperinsulinemia, too much insulin. uh, Dysglycemia, too much or messed up blood sugar. Messed up blood sugar and too much insulin. This is the main driver. These are the main drivers of excess cholesterol production. And this gets us right back to our triangle of disease. The triangle of disease, the digestive system, the blood sugar system, and the adrenal thyroid complex. This is the main reason for a heart disease epidemic. And if you've listened to any of this program for any length of time, it's not a surprise. Because all diseases can be backtracked to the triangle of disease. The good news, there's no drugs that can address the triangle, but we can do it with lifestyle changes. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. 844-236-6010 is our number. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll return right after this. Side, we do have lines open for you at 844-236-6010, 844-236-6010. If you have questions about heart health issues, statin drugs, if you're on a statin drug, you want to wean yourself off of it, if you're on any prescription drugs and want to wean yourself off of them, I've often said that if you're on a prescription drug, a long-term chronic prescription drug, you're taking it for the rest of your life or you're taking it for a long period of time, your number one health goal, number one health challenge should be to figure out how to wean yourself off that prescription drug. And one of the best ways to do it, of course, is to get on a good nutritional supplement program. And by the way, Nutrition will make your drugs work better. I get this question all the time. Well, will my drugs interfere with my effects or will my drugs interfere with my blood pressure medicine? Will my drugs interfere with uh, my medical prescriptions? 
No, they're not going to, well, they will interfere with them in the sense that they'll make them work better. They'll make them more potent. They'll make them stronger. When your body is stronger, your, your drugs will be more effective. You'll need less drugs. Ultimately, hopefully, ideally, you'll need no drugs. If you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we are here for you at 844-236-6010. If you have questions about the longevity products or business or just a success story you'd like to share, or if you want to contribute to the conversation, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. Tomorrow we'll continue talking about uh, how you can really lower your cholesterol and how you can really, if you so desire, and how you can really protect your heart without prescriptions, without drugs. And it's no surprise, I'm not going to tease you here, it just goes back to the triangle of disease. And actually, I think the triangle of disease is a real easy way to simplify heart health, uh, all health challenges. It's a real easy way to understand why the body breaks down. But if you want to further simplify the triangle of disease, you can call it just, you can just refer to two points. If you just take care of the two bottom points on the triangle of disease, the base of the triangle, which is the digestive system and the blood sugar system, you will be healthier and healthier quickly. It won't take very long for your body to adjust. If you're dealing with a health challenge or you're on medication, and especially if you're dealing with one of these health challenges where you have all kinds of things going wrong. And I get letters from folks who have dozens of different things going wrong with their body, cataracts and arthritis and irritable bowel syndrome and cognitive impairment and fatigue, all in the same person. And you throw up your hands and you say, what do I do? How do I address all of these health issues? You go back to the root. You can think of the triangle of disease and the two points at the base of the triangle of disease as roots of the disease tree. The leaves of the disease tree are all the various ways the body breaks down. And you could have a dozen different leaves. You can have a dozen different bodily breakdowns. And if you try to address all of the different bodily breakdowns individually, you're going to go crazy and it's not going to work because all of the leaves on the disease tree grow from the root, from the soil. And if you go to the soil and the root, you won't have to worry about the leaves. The tree itself will take care of the leaves. Likewise, if you go to the root of your biochemical dysfunctions and breakdowns in the body, the body tree will take care of the symptom leaves. The root is always going to be the digestive system and the blood sugar system. I don't know how many different ways I could say it, but once we figure this out, you're not going to need a, we're not going to, I'm not going to need to be here. I'm going to be out of a job. And so will your doctor for that matter. Because we can do all this ourselves. You return to the digestive system and the blood sugar system, which, by the way, are linked, are connected. All health challenges go back to these two basic points, the digestive system and the blood sugar system. You want to lower your cholesterol? Drop your blood sugar. You want your heart to be healthier? Stabilize and reduce insulin secretion. This is the real cause of elevated cholesterol and the real cause of heart disease. This is why heart disease is part of what is known as metabolic syndrome. Metabolic syndrome is a whole bunch of things that go wrong in the body, all associated with insulin resistance, excess secretion of insulin. We will talk about that at length tomorrow, and we'll give you some real ways that you can protect your heart, real nutritional strategies for protecting your heart. All right, 844-236-6010 is our number. A couple of, a couple of articles here that I want to read to you. Chronic liver inflammation linked to Western diet. Surprise, surprise. This is from uh, the American Journal of Pathology. A new study reports that mice fed a Western diet, which is high in fat and sugar, resulted in hepatic inflammation, that is liver inflammation. Moreover, liver inflammation was more pronounced in Western diet fed male mice uh, that also lacked a bile acid receptor. They had a, a problem with their bile. In other words, if you are dealing with chronic liver disease, and if you're one of the 100 million Americans with fatty liver, if you're one of the one out of three Americans, I, that this number astounds me, who's dealing with a fatty liver, if you have hepatitis C, by the way, if you have any kind of liver health issue, backtrack it to your diet. Reduce your intake of fast-burning carbohydrates. And by the way, when they talk about the Western diet, what they're basically talking about is the fast-burning carbohydrates. This is where that whole idea of energy comes from. Energy-dense foods, foods with lots and lots of sugar, throw off the blood sugar system and throw off liver health. Reduce your intake of fast-burning carbohydrates. You will reduce chronic liver inflammation. The liver being arguably the most important organ in the in, uh, most important organ in the body after the heart and the brain. 
fermented, this is from, uh, from the journal PLOS One, Public Library of Science One. Fermented red clover extract stops menopausal hot flashes and symptoms. How interesting is this? Red clover, which is an herbal medicine that's found in a product called Remy, uh, actually it's not. Remy Feminine is another product. That's the black cohosh or blue cohosh. That also has been shown to have some beneficial effects on menopausal hot flashes. This is red clover. Red clover is one of my all-time favorite herbs. We've been using it, I've been using it in my herbal pharmacy, or I used it in my herbal pharmacy for a long time. Red clover, uh, fermented red clover extract stops menopausal hot flashes and symptoms. This was a study uh, that, was conduct- that was published in the journal PLOS1, according to study lead professor Bendix Jeppesen. These findings have been, uh, these findings... Oh, wait a minute here. The above is an Im- he says, uh, the above is the most important information from the scientific article combined red clover, isoflavones, and probiotics potentially reduce menopausal vasomotor symptoms. It could be, it may not be the red clover, it may be the bacteria, because this is a study that's done on fermented red clover. The study found that extra, uh, red clover extract prevents uh, menopausal bone loss, which affects one in three women over the age of 50. And it may very well be the probiotics, the good bacteria, because we know that good bacteria or healthy bacteria play a role in estrogen metabolism. In fact, if you are dealing with any kind of elevated estrogen issue, if you're dealing with uh, autoimmune diseases, if you're dealing with hot flashes or menopausal symptoms, which are the result of an out-of-balance estrogen to progesterone ratio, Estrogen levels drop as women get older, but the balance between estrogen and progesterone is really where the issue lies. Not in the drop in estrogen, but in the elevated estrogen compared to progesterone. It's the ratio, the proportion. So when, you have, when a woman is going through menopausal symptoms, balancing out that excess estrogen by using progesterone cream, by using pregnenolone, by using vitamin A and vitamin E, and by protecting against broken down, against the toxic estrogen metabolites, toxic estrogen breakdown products with probiotics and fermented foods are really good strategies. Even just fasting and caloric restriction can reduce hot flashes. If you're a woman out there dealing with vasomotor, motor symptoms, as they say, which is a blood, vessel, blood vessels that open and close inappropriately. If you're dealing with hot flashes, calming the body down via caloric restriction and via fasting is a wonderful strategy for reducing hot flashes and all the other symptoms associated with menopause, including anxiety and insomnia. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. We will return with your phone calls on the bright side right after this. Back on the bright side, 844-236-6010 is our number. Time to hit the phones. Let's go to Texas and welcome Ernest to the bright side. Good morning, Ernest. Hey, Ben. How are you doing? What's going on, my friend? How can we help you? Okay. So uh, a couple of weekends ago, my son, uh, early Saturday morning, had a had a, what looked to me to be a small seizure. And... Um, we went ahead and we took him to the to the doctor where they did an EEG and they claimed that um, he's like 80 percent more likely to have another seizure within the okay. next uh, six to eight months. And so, Does it why? Uh, they said that the EEG was very active, so they saw. Um, but they didn't say what was wrong. Sleeping. They didn't say you what know, was while wrong. He was sleeping, it's like I guess there's a lot of activity. Yeah. You know? Okay. Okay. Did they say? Did they notice anything wrong in the brain? Any lesions? Does he have any weight problems? Does he have any skin rashes? Digestive issues? Anything like that? Um, no. I mean, they they were gonna do an MRI, and I think they they kind of held off on it. And um, uh, but other than that, I mean, he he is he's very skinny. Uh, he does have allergy problems. Got it pretty bad you know he's i mean sometimes he'll sneeze you know 20 times a day god and, god uh, these are all clues this is what your doctor should have been doing is looking for these kinds of clues but nonetheless we can do it ourselves here uh how old is the baby he's nine years old oh he's nine okay and uh was he breastfed no, no. and was uh, mom when mom uh, was was pregnant was she uh, any health issues there anything going on with her health no, the only thing is, is that about, uh, and I, I think I talked to you once about this, you might remember, uh, my wife was diagnosed with colon cancer at the age okay. of 29. 
All right. Um, so, and she's currently done with all her treatments and stuff like Good that. Deal. Did they take any of her colon out, by the way? Yeah, they did. They only left her with about a 12, 12 inches. Okay, now, now did she have the baby post post treatment, post cancer, or, or it was after the uh, afterwards? No, it was it, uh, everything was uh, a, her treatment was after the kids were born. After so the I cancer, think, okay. Yeah, this was just okay. a couple years ago that she was right. diagnosed and had treatment. Okay, no skin problems on the child, right? No, the only thing that he did have, and he had it more than once, and I don't know why my daughter never had this, but whenever he was very young. He had impetigo a few times. I'm not got sure it. how he got that. Got it. But, uh, my okay, daughter. and he had it more than once. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Maybe you're dealing two or three times. Okay, so the, the baby's comprom the child is compromised in some way uh, at the level of the immune system. Probably involves the digestive system, as I was saying before uh, earlier in the program. Always backtrack to the digestive system. The fact that he's got the allergies that leads me to believe that there's digestive health issues there. The immune system is located in the digestive system. Uh, he may also be dealing with some kind of uh, malabsorption issues and nutritional deficiency issues secondary to that or following that malabsorption. So here's Here's what you want to do. Number one, you've got to figure out if there's anything going on with the digestive system in terms of foods that he's responding negatively to. And now if he's nine, it's going to be hard to kind of like ask him questions, but you can observe. Observe bowel movement problems, gas, bloating, discomfort, complaints about certain foods. He says, I don't want to eat that. That, makes, that food, that makes me feel sick. Anything along those lines. You really need to get to the bottom line of what's happening at the digestive system level. At all, and, and then you're going to eliminate, eliminate specific foods. Sugar is a major bad guy for everybody, but especially if his system is already unstable. And I'm not talking just sweets, although definitely those too, but fruit juice, apple juice, pear juice, anything that's high concentrations of sugar should be avoided. And foods that are heavily processed that break down into sugar should be avoided. Snack bars, power bars, things that, uh, as I was saying earlier, high energy foods can destabilize the nervous system and throw things off at the level of the brain and can induce seizures. Uh, so be very careful with those kinds of foods. Replace them with protein and also with good fat. I'd be using coconut oil for the child on a daily basis. Make sure he's using uh, the essential fatty acids, the ultimate EFAs, which are all important for the baby's brain or for the child's brain, as well as for helping uh, stabilize, uh, stabilize the blood sugar system. Uh, uh, have him sipping on the Beyond Tangy Tangerine. You might want to get him some extra B vitamins, which are very, very important for, for brain health. You may want to get him some extra fish oil, which is very important for brain health. I'd be using a little bit of vitamin E, maybe 100 IU of vitamin E a day, very important for the brain. You might want to give him a little bit of taurine, T-A-U-R-I-N-E, uh, which is a very important amino acid for brain health. And for anybody with seizures, should be thinking about using taurine on a regular basis, maybe 100 milligrams a day, 50 to 100 milligrams grams a day. Taurine is a little bit tricky to find in foods, although it is found in high protein foods. So uh, you making sure he's eating his eggs and fish. Fish is an especially good source. Seafood is an especially good source of taurine um, and meat as well. Uh, and then also, uh, before he goes to bed, you might want to consider giving him a little bit of GABA, G-A-B-A, -A, which has anti-seizure properties. Is he, he's sleeping okay, correct? I believe he is. The other night, it did seem like his breathing was a little inconsistent while he was asleep. Um, but, but he doesn't have he doesn't have insomnia or wake up in the middle of the night or anything like that. No, no. Okay, good. That's a good thing. So maybe a little bit of magnesium before he goes to bed and a little bit of GABA before he goes to bed. All right, and then if you can get him into some good lifestyle kinds of things like breathing deeply and slowly, this for not just for your boy, but anybody who's dealing with seizure disorders, low levels of oxygen can trigger seizures. So making sure that he's breathing correctly, he's practicing his slow, deep breathing techniques. So you got number one, working on the digestive system. Use, uh, I forgot to I didn't mention this, but using fermented foods can also help him if he'll eat sauerkraut or fermented radishes or anything like that, even a little bit of yogurt if he can do dairy. Um, so working on the digestive system, eliminating problem foods, working on the blood sugar system, staying away from foods that spike the blood sugar, and then using nutritional supplements, i.e. Uh, uh, essential fatty acids, as well as extra fish oil, magnesium, taurine, the B-complex in general, and the Beyond Tangy Tangerine. Uh, uh, and I would also be uh, adding in, if you want, at, at night, a little bit of GABA and a little bit of extra magnesium. All right, Ernest? Okay, I have one last question for you. Yes, sir. Um, the... Uh the night before that he had that seizure, we were diffusing uh, some pretty strong essential oils. That could have triggered it. And he, 
You think that could trigger it? Easily, yes, easily. It shouldn't have, though. Uh, th- the fact that it triggered it means that he's a little bit unstable at that level, so at the brain level or at the nervous system level. It shouldn't trigger it, but it could have if he was already unstable. So it's not like it's the essential oils cause the problem, but they cause a little bit of extra destabilization, possibly. I'm not saying for sure, but possibly they could do it. Essential oils are very medicinal. They're very powerful compounds. They're not like nutrition. So you've got to be very careful about using essential oils. If he's already destabilized, that could have definitely thrown things off. Okay. Okay. okay? Thank you very much for your time. Thanks, Ernest. Take care, buddy. All right, let's go to my friend Elaine in Alaska. Good morning, Elaine. You had a question from yesterday, right? Yes, sir. I sure did. And that- was on. Uh, my husband is um, considering getting the amalgams taken out. Um, okay. In, in like in the 1980s, um, the current dentist he um, is going to recommended it, and he said he uses a technique that. Some kind of high suction technique that it um, keeps it from getting in the blood, keeps the excess. Currently, so I would okay. Your brain, um, I know it's dentistry, which is kind of a little bit off. Um, Not really. No. Here's what you want to do. You want to make sure that you're doing everything you could do to protect, to chelate, magnetically attract the calcium or the the mercury, so it gets out of the body. Does that make sense? Chelation is, is a magnetic kind of process that, where stuff gets pulled out of the body. Chelating agents magnetically attract mercury and then the, the, it allows the body to flush the, merc, uh, flush the mercury out. Chelating agents include bentonite clay. He should be doing bentonite clay every day that he's doing this procedure. Go get some bentonite clay, put a half a teaspoon or a teaspoon of water and drink it down. Zeolite also, same way, has chelating properties. Vitamin C is a wonderful way to chelate mercury. Make sure he's using high doses of vitamin C. You may even talk to your dentist about it. He probably has some experience with vitamin C. There's a dentist here uh, in Colorado who uses high, super high constant, uh, high doses of vitamin C when he does his chelation. Ther- uh, he does his mercury, uh, removes, when he removes mer- mercury amalgams. Uh, so high doses of vitamin C. Selenium is all also a very uh, effective chelating agent for mercury. So get him on his ultimate selenium. Uh, let's see. There's one more. Oh, sulfur uh, and N-acetylcysteine. Both sulfur and N-acetylcysteine have chelating properties. So make sure he's using maybe 100 to 500 milligrams of N-acetylcysteine a day and then maybe 1,000 milligrams of MSM sulfur a day. I would also be throwing in alpha lipoic acid which not only has some sulfur in there but also protects the liver alpha lipoic acid is an amazingly helpful nutritional supplement that you have to go out of your way to get because you're not going to find it in a lot of formulas it's very well it's 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 relatively expensive compared to most uh, nutritional supplements but well well worth it uh, for any kind of liver health issues for any blood sugar issues and also as a chelating agent so i'd be using some alpha lipoic acid also some vitamin e 400 international units of vitamin e a day thanks for call lane god bless you hope we helped you out have a beautiful day and that's all the time we have for today on the bright side thanks for listening friends i'm pharmacist ben please check out my truth skin health products at truthtreatments.com truth balm truth omega-6 healing cream truth transdermal c serum and truth transdermal c balm all at truthtreatments.com and our longevity products at brightsideben.com pharmacistben.com or criticalhealthnews.com thanks for listening have a wonderful beautiful awesome spectacular day on pharmacist ben we'll talk to y'all later bye for now 